this is the USS Voyager, we're in the Delta Quadrant, and we don't give two about keeping things kosher. I'm Sean Ferrick for Trek Culture, and here are the 10 most inappropriate Star Trek Voyager moments. Number 10, the Doctor made some additions to his program message in a bottle. This episode is a perfect example of a fleeting sexual connotation in an episode focused on a completely different topic. In Message in a Bottle, the Doctor is sent to another Starfleet ship in the Alpha Quadrant via seemingly abandoned alien sensor stations. His mission? Tell the people on the ship that the Voyager crew is indeed alive, but he finds Romulans have taken over the ship, and he and the EMH on that ship have to save the day. So begins an intense episode in which two holograms fight to get the ship back into Starfleet's hands. During one of his first encounters with the other EMH, the Doctor regales him with tales of adventures in the Delta Quadrant and all the things he can do. Additions to his program are the main topic of discussion, and he proudly reveals that thanks to additions, he's been able to have sexual relations. The shocked Prometheus EMH then asks if he would be able to download those subroutines before the Doctor leaves. This revelation sent imaginations racing. Did the Doctor not have a certain body part, or did he simply download some moves into his program? It's an intriguing concept concept that's reminiscent of Data in The Next Generation, declaring he's fully functional. The randomness of this revelation adds to the shock experienced by viewers after it's disclosed. Number 9. Neelix and a Klingon Visitor. Prophecy. This moment was not quite as random as the previous entry. However, it still provided viewers with a slight shock before causing laughter. In Prophecy, a vessel full of Klingons are transported to Voyager after faking a core breach. Their leader believes that Tom and Balana's unborn child is a prophesied saviour of the Klingons that they've been trying to find for years. A fight eventually breaks out between the two crews after the Klingons attempt to take over the ship. Everything ends well though, and the Klingons are dropped off on an class planet. While all the drama's going on, Charega, a Klingon female, has her sights set on Harry Kim, who she wants to mate with. Harry's not keen, as you might expect, and Neelix offers to take her off his hands. It should be noted here that Charega is clearly wanting to mate with Harry, and everyone can see it. By taking her off Harry's hands, Neelix becomes the focus of Chiriga's lust and, well, one thing leads to another. Uh, toward the end of the episode, Tuvok is approaching his quarters, which he has been forced to share with Neelix since the Klingons came aboard. He and the audience hear noises coming from behind the doors that sound like a fight is occurring. Glass is heard smashing and grunts are audible until Tuvok attempts to gain entry. The noises abruptly stop, the doors open, and there are Neelix and Chirega with scratches on them and the room is a complete mess. Tuvok and the audience know just what's occurred. There's no need really to use imagination here. Number 8. Q Jr. being a typical teenage boy. Q2. In Q2, Q Jr. has been creating chaos in the universe, and Q, along with the Continuum, have had enough. So, Q Jr. is made mortal and left on Voyager for a week to straighten up. Before his mortality, however, he makes a menace of himself throughout the ship. He creates wars between races who are allies and reprograms the replicators to give them more personality. It's not these incidents that are the focus of this entry, though. While enjoying himself and creating chaos on Voyager, Q Jr. decides to have a party in engineering, complete with music, an awesome light show, and pole dancers. Yes, pole dancers, gyrating on poles surrounding the warp core. Clad only in underwear, these girls dance like there's nobody watching. Engineering becomes a club, complete with everything a teenage boy, or a lot of boys for that matter, would enjoy. He doesn't finish there though. After his antics in engineering, he pays Seven of Nine a visit and proceeds to remove her suit with a click of his fingers. Viewers only see the top half of Seven's back, however. Q Jr.'s comment of talk about perfection provides adult males everywhere with a little excitement. These moments are a bit more family friendly than some of the other entries on this list. However, for adults, they provide the opportunities for little enjoyment during a less dramatic episode. Number 7. Barkley and a Sex Worker Inside Man Poor Barkley. He tries so hard, and during his time in Voyager, he's integral in allowing them to communicate with the Alpha Quadrant. In Inside Man, the monthly communications are received by Voyager, who are thrilled to find its hologram of Barkley complete with a way to get home. Meanwhile, back in the Alpha Quadrant, Barkley is in despair, as for the second month in a row, his hologram did not make it to Voyager. It soon revealed that the Ferengi stole and altered the hologram to allow them to steal Seven of Nine's nanoprobes. The big question here is, how do they know about the hologram? Turns out Barkley has been seeing a woman named Leosa while he was working on the hologram. In true Reg fashion, he didn't talk about anything else other than his work, and Leosa left him after the first failed attempt to send the hologram. With some help from Deanna Troy, Barkley finds out that Leosa is working for the Ferengi 
and was only using Barclay to get information on the hologram. The implication here is that Lielsa is a sex worker who was hired to get the information and would be paid with profits from the sale of the nanoprobes. Thankfully, Barclay is able to stop the Ferengi before they're able to complete their plan, but the fact that he was in a relationship with a sex worker shocked viewers and provides a less than kid friendly revelation in an episode full of drama. Number six, Balana and Tom can't fight the feeling. Scientific Method In Scientific Method, the entire crew of Voyager is subjected to experiments by aliens who have been able to hide themselves from sensors. Every crew member experiences symptoms of these experiments. The captain has an increasingly more painful headache and Chakotay is rapidly aging. Seven is enlisted by the doctor to help expose the aliens and cure the crew's ailments as they are the only ones not affected. While the captain is becoming increasingly more hostile, Tom and Bellana begin behaving in ways that don't model appropriate behaviour. Several incidents occur in public places where they are caught kissing quite aggressively, with increasingly more crew members reporting this behaviour to the captain. <coughs> Buzz kills. <coughs> it comes to a head after they are caught by Tuvok and Engineering, hungrily kissing each other while setting off various alarms on the panel they are pressed up against. The ravenous nature of their encounters make audiences realise they are a step away from getting down and dirty where they stand. This particular set of events is not as explicit as some other entries. However, it's the inappropriateness of their behaviour that puts it here. Even Janeway chastises them for the behaviour, telling them it's not how senior officers should be behaving. It's unclear whether this behaviour was caused by the aliens experimenting on them or not, but it still remains inappropriate on a starship, or anywhere in public for that matter. Number five, the doctor brings all the girls to the yard. Tinker, tenor, doctor spy. This episode is one of Voyager's funniest. In Tinker Tenor Doctor Spy, the Doctor decides to change his program again, to allow him to daydream. His daydreams are fanciful and he soon begins to daydream whether he wants to or not. It turns out, while they are travelling through a nebula, a hidden ship belonging to the Hierarchy race is monitoring Voyager through the Doctor. It is only through his daydreams that they can monitor Voyager and their attempts are causing the Doctor's problems. His daydreams focus on him becoming the emergency command hologram, only to be activated when the captain is unable to command the ship after she refuses his proposal in real life. This daydream causes problems for Voyager later on, however, it's the other daydream that raises eyebrows. In the other daydream, the Doctor is being pursued by Janeway, Seven, and Bellana, who are all lusting after him. So begins a series of attempts by the women to gain the Doctor's attention and affection. During a briefing, Bellana runs her naked foot up and down the Doctor's leg under the table while Seven propositions him via a pad. It's Janeway that provides the inappropriate moment here though, as she proceeds to place the Doctor's hand on her lower back area. It's the most explicit touching moment in Voyager. The Doctor is quite literally feeling what Robert Picardo called during a Voyager panel the seat of power. It's abundantly clear from their faces that both parties are enjoying the moment, making it all the more inappropriate. Number four, Q seducing Janeway. The Q and the Grey. In the Q and the Grey, Q arrives on Voyager to proposition Janeway. By appearing in her quarters with sexy music playing, roses and a bed clearly intended to be used for something other than sleeping, when Janeway tells him to get rid of the bed, Q states his intentions loud and clear. I have no intention of getting between those Starfleet sheets. If the audience was confused before, this cleared it up straight away. Q then reveals to Janeway that he wants to mate with her. After leaving, Q continues to pop up on the ship trying to seduce Janeway to no avail. It's then revealed Q wants to mate with Janeway to stop the war occurring in the continuum that began after Quinn took his own life on Voyager in Death Wish. Enter a female Q who calls Janeway a dog, in a more subtle way of course, and proceeds to claim Q as hers. Q then takes himself and Janeway to the continuum and they continue to discuss Q's intentions. Eventually he agrees to mate with the female Q in front of Janeway who looks oddly interested in what the two Qs look like while they're mating. All they do is touch fingers and they've done the deed. The inappropriateness of this episode comes from the clear sexual references embedded in the dialogue between Q and Janeway. Lines such as, admit it Kathy, it's been a while and don't you like to watch, are tailored for adults but thankfully should go over the heads of most children. Number three, seven and a holographic Chakotay, human error. 
It's well established in the Star Trek franchise that Seven of Nine as a character was created to both boost ratings and bring a certain sex appeal that had been lacking in Voyager to that point. It's rare to see her actually in sexually explicit moments, however, but in human error, her sexuality is on full display. To develop her skills for interacting with members of the crew, Seven creates a holographic program in which she can engage with holographic versions of the crew. During her time on the holodeck in this program, she begins to establish a relationship with the Chakotay hologram that quickly becomes sexual. In one scene, while cooking, Seven sucks Chakotay's finger to taste an element of the meal being prepared. The sexual nature of the sucking leaves nothing to the imagination of adults everywhere, with this action clearly mirroring a more explicit one. The other incident occurs later on the same night, with Seven sitting up from laying next to Chakotay under a blanket. Not said. The sexual element of these two interactions is clear, and viewers are left wondering whether Seven has fallen for Chakotay himself or just his hologram. Either way, this episode does create the idea of the relationship in viewers' minds, although nothing comes of it until Endgame. That's another discussion altogether. Number two, Paris plus Janeway was babies. Threshold. The infamous episode Threshold. This episode will go down in both Voyager and Star Trek history as one of the weirdest, most inappropriate episodes ever. Tom Paris wants to reach warp 10, which will allow him to be everywhere in the universe at one time. And if that's not an innuendo, I don't know what is. It's a dangerous undertaking, and the Doctor warns Tom he may injure himself, but Tom is determined to do it. So he reaches warp 10, comes back to Voyager, and turns into a weird creature that's an apparently an evolved version of Tom. After he continues to change, Tom becomes more irate and eventually escapes sickbay and runs into Janeway, who he knocks out and kidnaps. Janeway is clearly unconscious, and Tom takes a shuttlecraft and they promptly disappear. Time passes, and Voyager eventually finds them on a planet, and Tuvok and Chakotay go to retrieve them. What they find are salamander-looking creatures that have babies. Yep. Paris and Janeway made some babies, and then they abandoned them. Once they're returned to their human form and are left alone in sickbay, an interesting conversation occurs that makes the audience wonder if Janeway is attracted to Tom. After apologising for what happened, Tom is promptly told by Janeway, who says you initiated it, which is quickly followed by an explanation referencing the mating behaviour of other species. However, it is this interaction that increases the inappropriateness of the situation as there is a hint that the captain is attracted to an officer under a command. Certainly goes against the rules. Number one, whole episode about sex. Elogium. There's no other way to describe this episode except the main plot and subplot focus on sex and mating. Voyager enters a cloud inhabited by life forms who begin to disrupt Voyager's systems after some attach themselves to the hull. While this is occurring, Kez begins to eat weird food combinations and begins acting increasingly more strange. She then reveals to Janeway she is experiencing elogium, the mating cycle of a compens. It's soon revealed that the proximity to the cloud has caused Kes to experience it earlier than normal. Neelix and Kes then begin to discuss whether to have a child or not, as the cycle only occurs once and after that they will not be able to conceive a child. This subplot is not as inappropriate as the main plot, as the main plot is soon revealed to focus on mating and mating rituals. As such, Voyager begins to be attacked by a bigger life form, which is believed to perceive Voyager as a sexual rival for the affections of the smaller life forms attached to the hull. After trying various things to free themselves, Chagode suggests they act submissive and show the other life form they are not a rival. This works, and Voyager's freed. During this episode, various lines such as, We appear to have lost our sex appeal, and in the future, if I have any questions about mating behaviour, I'll know where to go, add to the sexual nature of the plot. Additionally, discussions around the crew beginning to fraternise and Chakotay asking Janeway if she will pair off also create a sexual environment in the episode. A clear focus on sex in this episode, making an obvious pushing of the boundaries pre-Watershed. And that's everything for our list today. But if you can think of anything else, drop it into the comments below. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. You can catch us over on Twitter at Triculture. You can catch myself at Sean Ferrick as well. Whatever you do, sure maybe keep it a bit sexy. Maybe don't. It's up to you. Just remember to look after yourself, look after those nearest and dearest. And remember, you are awesome. Live long and prosper. Thanks very much.